Hello, little Gravity Timothy. Welcome back to your out-of-world experience. That's right, you've been teleported back to the year 2017 where apparently people are making mods for Hearts of Iron 4. And today's wonderful mod is Gates of Versailles. A wonderful mod that asks the bearing question of what would happen if nobody won the uh, Napoleonic Wars and they just sort of fizzled out. Oh, well, luckily for you, little Timothy, who's asking such a wonderful question, we can now find out what would happen in that world. And oh boy, looks bad. Okay, this is Gates of Versailles, which is, like I already mentioned, a mod where nobody really won the Napoleonic Wars, and after the Battle of Trafalgar, nothing happened that much. Um, in the world, Germany, come on, bros. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of unhappy Turkish people looking at this. Uh... <laughs> Alright, you know, European powers and their rulers and colonial borders need to be stopped! I have no idea what happened here. I'm assuming the War of 1812 went very differently, but then also at some point they were like, just get the ruler out, we're done. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely have a lot of questions. A lot of questions. But, just because I'm making fun of this mod already for its absolute bizarrity, I'm not gonna say too much bad about it because these are the mods that we all love in Hearts of Iron 4 where things are just... A little crazy. Like, I'm just, I'm not 100% sure about the logistics of why, <laughs> why the Dutch in Tasmania. Uh, I'm also assuming there was a great war at some point. I'm not sure between which parties. I'm sure the law could um, uh, tell me somewhere in a screen. But uh, as we know on this channel, we're unable to read. Okay, I've unintentionally accidentally hit the law button, and now I've figured out that the great war in this scenario, the Entente consisting of France, Russia, UK, faced off against central powers of Prussia, the Austrian Empire, and the Ottoman Empire, and the United States. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one hell of a dream team there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I guess we were allied with the French, but not so much anymore. Here are the factions. We've got the French one, and then the West Minister Accord and Indo-Chinese Liberation Front. But there aren't too many focuses in the mod just yet, but the ones they do have are pretty beefy. I gotta say, we got the UK one, we got the French one, we got the Prussian one, and I think we got the Russian one. There might be a couple oh the Italian one as well. There's an Italian focus too, because of course there is, because I'm destined to eternally play Italy. Uh, but I'm sure they've definitely got a lot of plans for this mod, which I will be following along gleefully, as I do love a good mod. Ah uh, yes. It's King George V and his right-hand man, Prime Minister Archibald Sinclair. So yes, our imperial situation in 1936 is definitely not as prosperous as it probably was in the original timeline, or maybe a little more prosperous, depending on how our economic viability might be after the Great War. I'm imagining probably pretty bad. Uh, but things are a little bit wacky already. We own the British Raj and the British East Indies and half of Australia. Uh, we also have a lot more possession Sessions over here in China with our ports actually on the map and a little bit of influence in the Middle East and a little bit of Africa and then <coughs> the ruler but of course we'll see fit to make sure that our position today will be much better than it currently starts up because um, this I, I need to fix a few things about the borders won't point any fingers all right first things first funnily enough get this the king's dying oh I, I guess we um we didn't <laughs> invent the tank in this scenario did we a uh, little bit odd because I am currently somehow building the tank all right let's be real boys we all need this focus in our lives. All right, so I'm trying to figure out exactly which path I want to go down here because there are a lot to choose from in terms of what we're going to be accomplishing as the British today. Yeah, you see, we've got paths so we can go like absolute monarchy, uh, get taken over by the Navy, the Church of England over here where we can get a get a focus to get a war goal on Israel and do a bit of crusading, I guess. Uh, I think there are less crazy paths over here where um, we, we get Churchill by the looks of things and he wants to take over India. Then we got the new Whigs, which seems to be more of a democracy-focused path, but 
then we also do the Clone War on the French. And then over here we get the British Jacobin line, um, which um, I'm not too sure if I want to do this one, but I think I'm even going to go with the Absolute Monarchy one or the Churchill one. I haven't decided yet, I've got to keep looking. All right, I've decided that we are going over here and we're going to do the Absolute Monarchy. It's ridiculous and uh, the Church of England's also ridiculous, but I, I think these ones are a little bit too tame. The good news is our new king is absolutely doing wonders for our country. <laughs> He's also 70 years old in his portrait, apparently. <laughs> that's it. I was just looking for the navy and I was like, yeah, that's actually really good. There's kind of big navy here for the British. They've gone absolutely insane with it. Uh, bad thing though is we've got all these carriers. I guess we didn't think to put any planes on them. Uh, sadly for us, the king just won't stop partying. He's having too much fun. It's killing the nation softly in your arms. So uh, yeah, we're gonna do something about it. Not too sure what, but I guess we'll figure it out. And yes, clearly what we need <laughs> is more battleships of the Agincourt class. All right, so our absolute party king has not been too well. So we're going to replace him with someone called Alexander the First. I don't know who that is. All right, we have stormed the parliament and replaced our witless king with a... Uh, probably witless king, let's be real. And I guess in doing so, we've also... um. Well, this position's no longer needed. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm just gonna put this out there. So, either, uh, King Alexander, uh, <laughs> the text is wrong, or King Alexander here, um, if you actually pause and read this, um, is the King of Serbia. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I think they've got the wrong text over this Alexander, but apparently he wishes to unite Serbia. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't really have a military high command. I had to promote Montgomery to actually get him in here, so uh, I can't get any Air Force experience, so I've sent some volunteers over to the Swedish ship war to start racking some up. All right, now that we've settled the issue of governance, and we really have settled the issue of governance because there's literally just one man doing it all, it's time to get up with the British like doing best and that's being a colonial backstab. Yeah, so that will put us at war with all of the rest of the independent states of India, which we're going to go ahead and feed to the British Raj, who I've only just noticed haven't uh, replaced the old king. Um, oops. <laughs> and there you go, the Dominion of India, and it looks like they finally replaced the king. Um, with William Kitchener. <laughs> All right, next up, we're heading back over to the New World to have a wee chat about Canada's independence. That being that I don't think it really should have any. Although this is only our first step in our approachment of the Americas. Ooh, um, well, what was the German reunification via the North German Confederation has become the German reunification under Westphalia, which is, uh, yeah, it's no longer going to be reunified. Well, I say reunified. I, I guess <laughs> unified in general. <laughs> I guess with the collapse of any hope for a German state, uh, we're going to have to speed up our America plan. Uh, because France just got a hell of a lot stronger. Just, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a problem for us. Okie dokie, America. I have arrived to clean up this mess. I uh, also may be worried about all these units not looking too good here, but um, those are all actually Indians units, not mine. They made a ginormous army. Everything under here is India. Uh, I do have a full collab on the Americans, so eventually they will capitulate pretty easy. And uh, all those casualties aren't looking too good for me, but uh, they yep, they're almost down. And there we go. Go. There we go. Because I have full curl up on the Americans, like I said, I'm not going to bother puppet them or anything because they are going to give me everything. My manpower situation sucks beyond belief as well. So what I'm going to do is going to be a little bit sacrilegious because it's going to be a bit of a waste industrially, but I'm going to annex the British Raj and take all their troops. Um, yeah, that that should uh, that should deal with my, my problems quite a bit, I reckon. There you go. So I have to delete everything they had left over and obviously owning the states now we're up to 2.8 million but problem is we don't have like any compliance here whatsoever so all the factories that were here and that i did build here they're not here anymore all right next so we're coming back to europe with the american fleet i might add and i still haven't 
put any planes on. <laughs> okay, I need to make planes. Uh, yes, we're coming back to Europe because I think at some point the French are definitely going to declare war on me. So I'm going to start preparing for that inevitability. Uh, well, okay, just like I've been gobbling up the world, it looks like the French are also going to just finish off Europe at this point. Uh, I don't actually know where they are in their... F oh, I do know where they are in their focus tree. I guess... Uh oh. <laughs> okay, so wait, they or do they already have a war goal on me? They don't have a war goal on me. Uh, but this is gonna is this gonna give them a war goal? I'm not too sure, but I I'm kind of worried. Yeah. Well, I guess there goes the Dutch. I don't actually know what the Russians have done so far, actually, uh, other than <laughs> turn blue. So Italy's gone ahead and just declared war on a bunch of the Middle East. Uh, I don't know if that's really where you want to be building an empire, <laughs> but <laughs> we do know who's in charge. Hey, boys. I got an idea! You see, whilst I'm just sitting around waiting to see where the French keep expanding next, I'm going to expand myself into Denmark! Uh I'm gonna be a bit of a historical deja vu for some of you Danes, I imagine. Yes, it's just, it's just very important that we secure our bridgehead into Europe. Excellent, we've now cemented our control over in the north here, which can be very useful as I turn Denmark into an aircraft carrier. Alright, so next up I've noticed the Channel Islands are actually in the game, and they do have a crossing in northern France there, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm building it up completely, so it might make our invasion a lot easier. So whilst waiting around for the French, I realized that I need way more army XP. You see, Montgomery's not really been giving me too much, my land doctrine's kind of lacking, and I want to make some tanks. So what better way to get some than a bit of Imperial tomfoolery? Yep. <laughs> Don't mind me. Yes, uh, this time, China, we're after a bit more than just a port. There we go. Just uh, expanded those ports just a little bit. Still need a bit more army XP, though, so uh, tip top, tally ho. Oh, once again, after my colonial escapades, uh, nothing has happened, so I'm assuming I'm going to have to make the move here, France. So if the Continental Alliance under the French rule are not going to declare war on me, then I'm going to have to see fit that I do it myself. Come on. I think we can all agree that we'd rather not be living in a world where we're told what to do by the French. This is, a uh, this is definitely about to get a little messy. In fact, you know what, because I just have so much stuff around the world, I'm gonna also just call in all of my allies and puppets. Just get in here, boys, it's World War time. Yes, the landing commenced with no problem whatsoever, and it is time to run them down, chaps! I think it's safe to say the French army, consisting of potentially 240 divisions, uh, probably isn't in France. Well, <laughs> That was a little bit underwhelming. <laughs> uh, but I do now have the chance to redraw these borders in Europe. Uh, so I didn't know um, until now that you can return, uh, you can only return territory, you can't release nations. So I had to um, <clears throat> use a uh, console command to uh, go ahead and uh, <clears throat> uh, kill Prussia and then release them as the North German Confederation just because I didn't want to own the land here. Um, th thank you very much, mod developer, for that one. Um, yeah, I was also planning on releasing France, but uh, I guess I, I can't do that either now. I just own Western Europe. Why not? You know, I'm not too happy with just that because I want more. That French war was pathetic, and I also noticed that the Russians potentially have a bigger army. I just realized my puppet declared war on Bavaria. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll come help. And, uh, yeah, okay. Italy just declared war on Austria's colony down here, which means we're finally gonna see some action other than me. That uh, doesn't mean I'm not gonna declare war on Poland, though, as well. Oh! <laughs> And now the Russian AI decides to wake up. Yo, know, I might own the rest of Germany, but now you have a new Germany. Also, I just, um, I just noticed there's a, there's a sneaky Prussia just hanging out over here. I, <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of that. Oh, uh, the Russians were not too happy about that. They are not happy at all. Just, uh, the, the pesky little Prussia. Out of stuff to build a while ago. So now I'm just building, um... A few super heavy battleships. Uh, also, I have no idea how this Austrian and Italian wars are really going, because the front line hasn't moved at all, which means I imagine uh, there's probably a lot of casualties on this bad boy, but it won't let me luck. I right, go quick reload, now I can luck, and yep, that is pretty much what I expected. Oh, uh, well, 
uh, I think the Russians are in for a very bad time right now. Me and my, uh, actual German puppet shall give them a quick one-two. Oh, yeah. Uh, that, that ain't, that ain't going too well for the Russians. <laughs> that ain't going too well at all. Well, you know, old chap, I think it's quite safe to say they didn't quite stand a chance here, did they? Oh, I mean, um... Uh, Gerard, if <laughs> if that's the title you bequeath upon yourself, my dear. Uh, if you haven't gathered by now, this mod is definitely a rough around the edges in some places. Uh, so you ever wondered was probably like a good casualty ratio? Well, I've lost 36k. Uh, they've lost a 4.3 million. Huh. Okay. Wasn't expecting that one, Germany. All right, this uh, took a little bit longer to um, figure out, mostly down to the fact the Germans had actually gone ahead and somehow created their own faction, despite the fact they are my puppet. <laughs> um, so I just had to manually justify them, and we'll just assume the game will crash at some point. Oh, well, okay, the Russians finally capitulated, which is going to save us a bit of bother with dealing with the Austrians. Hey, there you go. Russia is green again. All right, this uh, malarkey with the German faction is going to have to go, because uh, sadly, all of my troops now no longer count as being supplied. Uh, so I've got 24,000 convoys. I'm going to send them to the Germans and annex them. You had fun, but you flew way too close to the sun. And that is all she wrote. You no, I actually kind of just want to take the colony that the Italians declared war on them for. There you go, don't mind if I do. And there we go. I could go ahead and kill Italy too, but um, there's really no point. I don't think they could. <laughs> there's no challenge in any of this. But in the end, we carved ourselves out one hell of an empire. And we are still at war with uh, what's left of the Chinese factions over there, but my puppets are all dilving it. And uh, I don't really care. Uh, but yeah, this mod's definitely a blast from the past. Really reminds me of those early Hoi 4 mods in good ways and very bad ways too. Uh, but I'm sure they'll keep updating and having fun with it. So uh, I'll come back at some point as well to check out some more names. But if you enjoyed the video and you're uh, feeling a bit nostalgic about this video, <laughs> leave a like and subscribe button down below uh, and tell me whether or not you want to see more of this um, chaos.